Colangio carcinoma is, uh, um, uh, is a rare tumor. Uh, it's not so well known also by physicians. So um, as I said, in most of cases, the diagnose, uh, is the diagnosis is done at an advanced stage because um, physicians don't think of this uh, diagnosis. And especially at the beginning, especially for intrahepatic colangio carcinoma, uh, symptoms are um are really in in most of cases there are no symptoms or symptoms are um very common symptoms like for instance abdominal pain so it's difficult to diagnose early uh, a tumor based just on abdominal pain or no symptoms um so especially for intrahepatic cholangio, the diagnosis is in a late stage in most of cases. For extrahepatic cholangio, we can have uh, um, biliary obstruction and so jaundice. And so in, in uh, this case, uh, the diagnosis can be done at an early stage due to the jaundice. Um, in other cases, uh, for instance, patients with uh, um, liver cirrhosis receives surveillance uh, because the liver cirrhosis is a risk factor for hepatocellular carcinoma, but also for intrahepatic cholangial carcinoma. So in some cases, patients received uh, ultra liver um, ultrasound or um, lab um, blood tests. And uh, we can find, for instance, abnormal, um, abnormal liver function tests or some uh, lesions um, identified in the liver at the ultrasound. And so then they, uh, the patient undergo other, um, other tests, other uh, diagnostic tests. But the, but the problem is that uh, um, we need to uh, improve the awareness of the disease because we have to think of it. And uh, um, this can be um, helpful for the patients to have a diagnosis uh, at an early stage when we can uh, offer a cure or at least uh, a better prognosis. And uh, um, yeah, that, that is the, 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 the most important uh, uh, issues uh, uh, for the diagnosis. Uh, uh, for an early stage diagnosis, uh, are, are this one. Then the, the problem is okay when we um, identify, uh, for instance, a lesion, a mass, uh, in a tumor in the liver, uh, we have to uh, do uh, a biopsy to define uh, the, the histology and to define if this uh, is a hepatocellular carcinoma or cholangial carcinoma, or for instance, metastasis from other cancer types. And for extrahepatic uh, cholangio, again, we need to have uh, an histologic diagnosis. So the first uh, exam in most of cases is the ultrasound. Then uh, we do a CT scan that has to include also the thorax to have, um, identify uh, lung metastasis is, uh, uh, if uh, um, present. And uh, in some cases, uh, liver MRI to better um, define uh, the, um, the, the, the extension of the disease uh, in the liver. And uh, um, if the disease is uh, limited to the liver and can, be, uh, can undergo surgery, we can skip the biopsy and we can refer the patient to the surgeon and then we can have the histologic exam after surgery. Uh, for patients with advanced disease where surgery is not an option, we need to have a, a, dial, um, a histological diagnosis and so we need a biopsy. And the biopsy for intrahepatic cholangio can be done as a, uh, an ultrasound guided uh, liver biopsy for patients with extrahepatic perihilar or especially distal uh, cholangio carcinoma. In most of cases, the diagnosis can be done uh, during the ERCP and with uh, the collection of uh, tumor uh, cells uh, or tumor tissue uh, in the biliary tract. Um, uh, due to the, uh, the knowledge of the molecular alterations that can be observed in cholangial carcinoma and that can be uh, targeted by drugs, we need to have a um, we need to collect enough tissue to have not only the diagnosis, but, but also to have the um, uh, molecular profiling that is in most of cases done you, uh, through the NGS, so next generation sequencing with different platforms, but 
this is not important. And so uh, we need to um, to collect enough tissue and we need to collect the uh, tissue and not the uh, cells. So histologic exam and not the cytologic exam. Um, so patients receive, uh, as I said, ultrasound, CT scan, in some cases, MRI, uh, biopsy, done uh, ultrasound guided biopsy or during the RCP. And then uh, when we have the uh, diagnosis, so we have to do the um, uh, molecular profiling to have a better definition of the disease and to see if the patients can receive um, targeted agents or, uh, or chemotherapy uh, combined with immunotherapy now. Um, and, uh, and also the molecular profiling is important uh, to uh, include patients in, in clinical trials. Uh, one important thing that I haven't mentioned, uh, but it's really, really important, is that considering that it's a rare disease with uh, um, some peculiarities uh, that in, can be uh, identified inside the liver or outside the liver, and we need the molecular profiling, it's important to uh, manage the patient uh, in a multidisciplinary team. So we needed to have uh, the um, hepatologist or gastroenterologist, the medical oncologist, the surgeons, uh, the radiologist, the interventional radiologist, um, the nuclear medicine physician, uh, the pathologist, radiation oncologist. So all the um, physicians involved in the treatment, in the diagnosis and in the treatment of patients with cholangia should work together to have a, a better, to, to provide the patients with a better um, treatment and better outcome.